Hi everybody, little Scott Moss here. I'll talk about Kawasaki's disease. This is one of the things that you'll get called a lot for. Um, it involves a prolonged fever in a child, usually under the age of five. Um, every once in a while you'll get a request for someone who's 12 and usually it's from a doctor who doesn't really know what's going on, sorry. Anyhow, um, they're kind of grasping at straws at that point. Uh, what happens is, for some reason in Kawasaki's disease, the coronary arteries can become aneurysmal. So they get big in one spot, and obviously that can be pretty detrimental. If the Kawasaki's disease gets bad enough, you can actually have clots form in the aneurysm. You can, unfortunately, have an aneurysm dissect and you know cause the coronary to kind of block itself. Um, I've never seen anything like that. I have seen one or two cases where the coronary artery was actually um, aneurysmal. So it's extremely rare. It does happen, so you really have to check it out and make sure you get everything you need. Um, but what I'll do is I'll draw it up here for you. Okay, so here's your short axis view, and I labeled the coronary cusps because those become important in this. Um, obviously, you all know the anatomy. This is the right atrium, tricuspid valve, right ventricular outflow tract, and a pulmonary valve. Sorry, I'm using this new Apple pencil, and it's kind of getting out of hand. <laughs> um, now, the coronary arteries will come off of the uh, aorta, and uh, you should be able to see them pretty well. Um, in some cases, if you bring the scale down further, far enough, you can actually see some color flow in them. So it just depends upon the person and whether or not you believe that you're actually seeing the color flow through the coronary artery. Um, I kind of feel as if uh, you're looking for an aneurysm, you're not looking for anything else. Um, if you can get a coronary in an adult and see a blockage and get a gradient, well, that's a cool thing, but in a child, you're really looking for an aneurysm, so there's no reason to throw the color flow on, in my opinion. Some people will argue with me. I'm okay with that. Okay, so I drew the coronary arteries as they come off of the aorta. In an ideal situation, in ideal anatomy, this is what you'll see, I'm trying to figure out why I can't erase here, but for some reason it's not allowing me to. Let's see, maybe this will do it. Yep, that'll do it. So the coronary comes off like this and in the left and in the right, and then it'll, you know, usually it turns a little bit in the case of the right coronary, so it'll kind of go like this left corner, if you're lucky, you'll see a bifurcation after the left main. Um, really lucky. Uh, it doesn't happen that often. So in a normal view, you should be able to see the coronaries. And, uh, you know, if you work hard at it, you can learn how to get them pretty regularly. Docs like to see the coronaries just to rule out Kawasaki's disease. Um, you know, if all the if all the things are there for Kawasaki's disease, like the fear, or like the peeling of the feet and the hands and a few other symptoms that can come up, look them up, you'll find them. Um, then you'll see um, how important it is to image the coronary arteries. Um, you want to get them as far out as you can because an aneurysm can occur pretty far out. But unfortunately, we're limited in echo because of the lungs as to how far we can image out. Now, in a situation where there was actually an aneurysm, um, what you would see is, let me erase a little bit of the left main here, and you may see um, a bulge in the coronary. And that would obviously be an aneurysm. Now, what will happen a lot of times is they'll have you measure from like here to here, from here to here, 
maybe from here to here. It's usually at least three spots. Some guys want five, but obviously in a case like this, you have an aneurysm, so there, the diagnosis is there. And it can be the same up in this area here, you know, where you can get an aneurysm in the right. So let's say all of a sudden you see an aneurysm like this up in the right. Well, then obviously you're going to measure from here to here, here to here, and here to here to give them a good measurement. Now the problem is, is that in theory, a little clot can form here. And obviously if that clot, clot breaks loose and goes down one of the coronaries, wherever it stops, like let's say it stops right here, then you lose all this heart tissue. So this becomes dead tissue. So it's just like having a heart attack, except in a child. And um, it's not something pleasant because obviously a child is, there's a lot more danger for not being able to resuscitate them um, uh, in this kind of case because their arrhythmia will probably be pretty bad. So anyways, that, that's my opinion. But um, the main thing in Kawasaki's disease that you're always looking for is this aneurysm. If you see that aneurysm, you need to contact the uh, Pete's cardiologist and tell them what you're looking at and then have them come up and double check your views and see if maybe they want, you know, they can maybe sometimes even get down here in this left, I think this is the circumflex, I could be wrong, it could be the LED, but they're going to double check it and who knows, maybe they'll find another aneurysm down here. So it's, it's vital to make sure you're seeing as much of the coronaries as you can. Now in this view where you do have an aneurysm, you may want to turn the color flow on and see if you get turbulent flow there. Um, you may get, you know, kind of a circular motion of the flow because of the aneurysm being big enough. Um, this again is when when you see it, which trust me, it's so rare. You'll if you see it, you'll be one of the few who has. Um, it's vital to get a hold of the Pete's cardiologist. So, anyways, that's the main view. There are other views where you can see the, especially the left anterior descending short axis view of the like a four chamber short axis view a lot of times if you angle up a little bit you can see the coronary the left anterior descending going down the septum and uh, that's where you can get some pretty good color flow because you're more parallel to flow here you're parallel to flow in the right coronary so you may see good color flow but the left you're not parallel to flow so it's going to be a lot harder to get color flow there. Anyhow, so this is a short one on Kawasaki's disease, one you'll see. So if uh, you see the diagnosis, now you know what to look for and uh, how important it is to get as much of the coronary arteries in as possible. So I've gone through quite a few of these um, talks and uh, I'm running out of things to write about or talk about so if uh, in the comments you can think of something you want me to explain um, I can do that just write in the comments uh, exactly what you want and I'll be more than happy to try to answer your questions and draw out what you're looking for um, and maybe we can you know start this communication that'll make this series a little bit longer so let me know I'm more than happy to help um, this is little Scotty Moss. Uh, I say that jokingly because uh, I am not little, let me tell you. And uh, again, just to redo what I've said before, I have 30 plus years experience in Pete's cardiology. So I've done this for a long time. I've seen a lot. I've, you know, kind of gone over a lot of stuff here in this series, but there are always things that maybe you never saw or maybe I can explain and when you come across it you can tell me about it and uh, I think it's important that we keep drawing these things out so people learn and have a good idea of what they're looking for so anyhow um, I'm gonna go and probably take a nap
Anyhow, we'll see you guys later. Bye.